Hi everyone, Logan here. Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will have seen a video recently by Joe from joesastrophoto.com and Glenn aka Astrobloke where they did a collaboration on the Bubble Nebula uh, combining 27 hours of data uh, and producing fantastic images um, at the end. But they also made available that data for anybody to download and um, have a crack at processing. So the Bubble Nebula is not something I have access to image down here in the Southern Hemisphere. And to be honest with you, the weather's been pretty crap here recently. So it seemed like a great opportunity to um, have a go at processing their data. Um, so this video is just how I approached it, um, mistakes and all. Over here I have um, the files um, that were provided and there's been some denoise, um, there's been stretching going on and I've applied dynamic background extraction. So that's the O3 and that is the S2 and the HA. Lots and lots of nice detail there. Before I combine those into the colour part of the image I needed a luminance layer where I could deal with all the sharpening of the details. So I had two choices. Um, one was just to do a copy of the luminance, of the HA, sorry, and the other was to do a super luminance. Now, um, this basically involves, you know, the, an integration of the um, data in these three to produce this, um, which gives you lots and lots of detail from each of these images, but also gives you lots and lots of stars. Now, maybe I've been watching too many videos by Quiv the Lazy Geek, but when I looked at the number of stars here to deal with versus these stars, I just thought, yep, I'm just going to go with the easy, the easy line here and deal with a smaller number of stars. So then I put that aside and um, I went back to the uh, producing the color part of the image. So I just used the LRGB combination tool put sulfur to red, HA to green, and O3 to blue to give the um, Hubble palette look. And uh, that produced an image um, like this, which is very, very green. And that's okay, that's normal. You just need to get your SCNR tool here, set it to green, and then you decide how much of the green you want to remove. Often um, people remove 100% of the green. I decided I've been re removing less green over the, over time because I sometimes think that a little bit of green in there is providing a little more uh, well, some interest to the image. I don't know. I wasn't sure how much to try on this one, so I had a stab in the dark at 75%, which was um, you know leaving a, a, a fair bit of green here to to deal with. I always figured that um, you know I could deal with it again later by applying this again to remove it if I didn't like it. But it just meant that I had some of the yellow, the blue, and some green in here to play around with hues and and the colours, etc. With the curves tool here. So um, that's what I did. Then I did a star net um, where I removed all the stars, which we have here, and I just popped that aside. And when I did that star net, I got this which removed all the stars, which was great. The problem was that I ended up with this waffle iron look to the very bright areas that Joe talked about. You can see it's a bit purple and it's got this grid-like look to it, like a waffle iron. And I've always found that quite hard to deal with in other images I've done. It just um, seems to stick around even when you put the stars back. These little ones, not a problem. When the stars go back, you don't see that. But these I just find really hard to deal with. So. I saw that Joe had done his version where he actually, I think from memory, put a, a range mask in here which um, gave a nice bright white area and then clone stamped the white across over the, the brighter stars, which I, I think that's the way it went, but uh, forgive me if I've got that quite a bit wrong. Um, but what I did was I actually um, produced a mask like this using, uh, and if I just pull this up here, using the um, game script. So I came across this script first on Sean Nelson's um, video uh, on his channel Visible Dark and um, if I just uh, get a multi-point and I just delete that. Um, you can do ellipses, you can do multi-point um, masks which means you can do a custom shape mask. So for my purposes, I just wanted ellipses, so um, you just click on here and you get an ellipse, 
and you know you can change the shape of it move it over the stars that you want to protect sort of turn it left and right etc add another ellipse bring it over the next bright star and you can do the as many of these as you like to whatever sizes that you like um, the other thing that you can do is with the multi point here you can do a custom shape ellipse a custom shape mask so if I click on multi point I click add here and if I say I just want to work on this area of the nebula I can click here I can click here I'll put another point over here maybe another one uh, here and I just can drag this to where I want it to be and I can start shaping this mask exactly how I want it um, to just oh, I've got that a little bit wonky but um, you know you can just bring these points in um, pop out a little bit there I won't go too too long into it because this will go on for ages and ages but you end up with a custom shape mask as you can see uh, I don't tend to use a gradient mask I would tend to use a gradient edge mask because you will um, get a smoother edge you click OK and we just wait for a second and you end up with a mask the shape exactly as you want that you can apply to your image usually I would do a convolution to this to actually blur it a little bit further but as you can see you sort of pop that on and um, there is your area you can work on we'll just remove that now so as I said I ended up with um, this mask behind here which I was able to place onto the brighter stars and brighter areas then applied star net and if we just run forward here if I get sorry just grab this version here where I can actually go through everything um, now I've applied star net but I've still got these bright stars still sitting here so I don't I'm not going to have the waffle line effect um, to have to cope with then it was a matter of using the the color mask under utilities the color mask tool where you can actually choose um, the the tool here to create a mask for the different colors um, and then work on those colors separately with curves so this was my my green mask um, this was my yellow mask because these were the main three colors that I knew I had in my in, in this version of the image and this is the the blue one and I just applied each of those and with the curves tool over here um, just played around with you know strip bringing up the blue and you know raising and lowering the green and the red as I wanted and changing the saturation and so as we go forward through here if I click forward you'll see oh, first of all I applied a convolution to blur everything because I didn't need sharp details in the color part of the image because that's that detail is coming from the luminance layer um, and as I click through you'll see more blue has appeared there and then there's a little more um, of a sort of a I guess a orangey red appearing there and got myself to sort of some colors that I quite liked and I thought that's fine we'll put that aside and we'll work on the luminance so um, if I bring out the luminance here um, now obviously I wanted to work on bringing out the details of the bubble and the nebula here and I didn't want to start working on the stars I wanted them to not get more accentuated and I didn't want to accentuate any more noise in the background so uh, in order to give myself a mask that I thought would work nicely just on the nebula I did a uh, star mask like this and I did a range mask as well that just brought in this area of the nebula and then through pixel math I used the formula range mask minus star mask and I ended up with this nice Swiss cheese um, looking range mask now I'm just going to remove the mask that's oh, show mask so I've already applied that one there that was easy to show so if I apply it this is what ends up happening I'm masking all the background which I don't want to be sharpening or fiddling around with I'm leaving just the nebula and the bubble to, to sharpen and, and work on for the detail and I'm protecting most of these big bright stars um, so uh, that was the what I used now one of the problems um, that I, I didn't really think about 
was that the mask did not entirely protect the stars fully as I was going through applying some HDR uh, multi-scale transform, transform um, a bit of local histogram equalization and also some uh, the multi-linear transform tool uh, for sharpness this is a sort of setup actually I changed that to RGB which is where it should be um, and you can just adjust these settings. Often I find having these set to 0 0.05 or 0 0.075 works the best, but on this um, 0.1 seemed to work quite well. And I sharpened that um, to the point where I thought it was quite nice, but I didn't follow the um, golden rule of making sure you check your stars. When I first started to learn about Pix Insight and I can't remember whose um, video YouTube um, channel I was following but uh, that person said as you go through applying all these different tools always check your stars and I didn't and I ended up with some fairly wacky looking stars so if we come back to this image to this um, color part of the um, image and I would be normally taking my now more processed luminance part and I would just be um, using the LRGB combination tool here. So I'd untick all these and click all those off. And with my luminance layer, which would be sitting in here, I would just drag and apply it onto the color part and what happens is, and if you see here, if I go forward, you see bang, all that detail suddenly appears. Now, when you're actually applying this LRGB combination tool, it does pay to play around with these sliders a fair bit. Often I find I'm dragging the lightness down a bit and bringing the saturation up here, but it depends on the image. I think on this one, um, it, it was sort of different again to the point where I liked it. But, um, you know, play around with these because if you sometimes just use the default of uh, 0.5, 0.5, you can sometimes end up with a very dark or dull looking image. So yeah, definitely play around with those sliders until you get a color and a brightness that you like. Now, because I hadn't taken notice of my stars, I ended up with um, really wacky shaped stars. As you can see here, I thought, well, what'll I do? Hang on a minute, I've still got the stars from right back at the beginning when they're around. So I this time did a uh, a mask a bit like this one but I just actually protected I think this area and this area and I just removed all these so once I just had these a uh, couple of bright things protected I applied the star net again to remove all the stars and then in pixel math I told it to add this star net star mask to my um, image or my version of the image should I say to now give me a version that had the round stars. I took that into um, Photoshop and played around further with adjusting colors, etc., and to use a bit of Smart Sharpen. And then actually I did bring it back into Pixel, uh, Pixel, sorry, PixInsight, um, to uh, work on this uh, area of the nebula again. And I also did a few versions where I removed um, 25% of the green, 50% of the green, or left all of the green. And I ended up settling on a version where I only removed 25% of the green. And so my version of the Bubble Nebula and this wonderful data that um, Glenn and Joe have both generously provided for us to have a crack at um, is to follow.